We've made good progress. We've made good progress. We are still learning more about a crash and chemical spill that forced the entire town of Tatopolis to evacuate. Now, just over a year later, the National Transportation Safety Board released more findings of the deadly accident. Good evening, I'm Brendan Morano. And I'm Karina Rubio in for Jennifer. The leak started when a tanker truck veered off the road to let a passing car avoid a crash. The chemical tank carrying anhydrous ammonia was punctured. Five people died from that spill and 11 more were hurt. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Cole Henke is following up on this story tonight. He's live in our Capitol Newsroom. Cole, what did you find in this NTSB report? Well, we already knew that the crash was caused because the tanker truck tried to veer over and let a passing car over in order to avoid a head-on collision. But this new report not only included the dash cam from the tanker truck showing exactly what happened, it also included an interview that police conducted with the driver of the passing vehicle. At first, it seems like just a close call on a two-lane road. The semi veers off the road to allow this minivan to slide through before getting in a head-on collision. But then the truck tips. The video cuts off there, but what happened next is well documented. Just over one year ago, the entire town of Tutopolis was evacuated because that truck leaked anhydrous ammonia after flipping. Five people died from the chemical spill. You can't, you, you can't walk away from these tragedies. Now more details about the crash are coming out. The National Transportation Safety Board released their report, including the dash cam video, as well as a transcript of an interview Illinois State Police conducted with the driver of this minivan. She is a 17-year-old girl from Ohio. In the interview, she accepts fault, saying, quote, Now I do, but back then I had no idea. Of course I think it's my fault. How could I not? Currently, no charges have been filed. This report was sent out to the Effingham County State's Attorney, who did not respond to a request for comment. In the interview with ISP, the driver openly questioned why a truck carrying that kind of dangerous substance was on Route 40 to begin with. And that question spurred a lot of behind-the-scenes conversations with lawmakers and IDOT over the last year as well. Senator Chapin Rose and some of his colleagues expressed frustrations last year with the lack of proper planning on IDOT projects. The I-70, I-57 junction by Effingham has been under construction for the past two summers, and at the same time, other projects were happening on nearby roads, redirecting traffic to places like Tutopolis. But Rose said IDOT has done much better in the past year. I felt as if this, this year, they tried very hard to avoid closing, you know, basically parallel portions of the primary and secondary route at the same time. Rose says the state is doing their part to try and keep roads safer, but there is a burden on drivers too. If I can say anything to anybody watching, it really is just please slow down folks, you know, in these, in these construction zones. Now, Rose also said they're working on some other changes, including having navigation apps like Google Maps or Apple Maps try to put you on the correct detour that IDOT sets aside when they're doing construction projects or they're clearing an accident. They filed a bill actually to do this last legislative session, but have decided they're going to try to work out a, the proper way to do it with tech companies before actually passing any sort of legislation. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Cole Hanke, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Cole, thank you. The state's Rebuild Illinois plan spurred the projects all around that I-70-57 interchange. The state is totally reconstructing a seven-mile stretch just east of the junction to just east of the Cumberland County line. They're also replacing the east and westbound I-70 bridges over the Montrose blacktop. Part of I-70 in Effingham County will be reopening soon. There will be newly rebuilt pavement westbound between Effingham and Montrose, plus westbound ramps at the Montrose interchange will also reopen. However, IDOT says the passing lanes both ways will still be closed to finish work in the median and remove the barrier wall in the eastbound lane. After the wall is removed, lane closures will be needed to finish striping in the eastbound lanes before they fully open to traffic. This is scheduled to take place in early November. 